In this lecture, I'm going to give a very basic overview of in quantitative data analysis and statistics, kind of like a very basic introduction to uh, data analysis concepts and, and the definitions of statistics. I wanted to start very simply and just, I wanted to start by just kind of describing or defining what data represents. These are a few definitions that I obtained from the Merriam-Webster dictionary, and I'm just going to read them out, out loud and we can uh, kind of think about them. So what, what is data? Um, one definition is factual information used to calculate, analyze, or plan something. Another definition, information in numerical form that can be digitally transmitted, processed. A third definition, information that is produced or stored by a computer. So in the context of, of social science research, when you're um, collecting information from people, uh, these definitions uh, can kind of fit with w what we're talking about when we think about data. Um, in the context of social science research, data usually represents um, a set of empirical observations that you make about people, either information that you collect from surveys or, or even information that you've obtained from participant observations, interviews with people, um, both audio and, and text or notes. Um, all of that is, is considered data. Um, a lot of times this data is entered into a computer either through um, audio files or uh, through a, da a database or a data set um, and it's usually stored in, um, in electronic formats and so I think th these different definitions can help us kind of think about what data represents um, but oftentimes when you're um, we'll be focusing a lot on quantitative data analysis uh, in this in the next few weeks and the analysis of numerical data and I'll talk more about that in a, in a few minutes um, but a lot of times when you're um, analyzing social science data, uh, data, you're looking at a data set. What exactly is a data set? Uh, this is a very basic anatomy of a data set that contains two variables, uh, one qualitative and one quantitative. Um, and a data set is, is kind of a, a construction of rows and columns that captures a set of observations about, some, about, about perhaps people that you're, you're studying. And so in this case, uh, we captured two, in, two, two pieces of information about, about different people. Uh, we captured their name and their age. So name is a qualitative variable. It's nominal. Uh, it, it's, um, it's, not, it's not numerical. Uh, versus uh, age, uh, the number of years since birth, uh, is a quantitative variable, has a fixed uh, zero point, it's a, it's a ratio level variable. So this is a very basic data set, an example of, of um, you know, what we might think of when we talk about data. But usually data does not look like this. Uh, uh, a, a, a real data set might look something, uh, oh. might look something like this. This was a, a data set that contains um, 311 calls uh, that were placed uh, with New York City. Um, and 311 calls are reports or complaints that um, people, anybody, any New York City resident can call into this line and place a complaint uh, to one of the different New York City departments. And on the New York City Open Data website, they, they make uh, information about all of these calls available. And you can actually download and analyze um, this information uh, to s sort of find patterns or trends in, in different um, 311 calls or complaints. Um, so this is kind of an interesting data source. Um, and again, uh, I want to talk about sort of a, base, a very basic distinction um, between different types of data. And this, ha this distinction has to do with how you obtain, a, a da how you obtain the data for your research project. And we're going to talk about primary versus secondary data sources. A primary data source uh, refers to data that you, you yourself have collected for your research project, project to answer um, your particular research question. So if, if you, the researcher, were collecting and administering a survey to a set of people to answer your research question, that would be an example of primary data. And the, the contrast is secondary data. And secondary data refers to data that was collected by someone else for a different purpose. And you might be able to use the data that somebody else collected for your own research project. 
Uh, and so if we take the example of, of the prior slide uh, with the 311 call, there was a, a, a researcher, a, a student actually, Jonathan Auerbeck, and he utilized um, the data from the 311 calls that I just showed you to um, estimate the total number of, of rats in New York City. Uh, he sort of wanted to combat one of the urban myths that there are, are just as many rats in New York City as there are people. And so he used um, information from rat sightings that were uh, reported to 311 to sort of estimate the number of rats and also to sort of identify New York City neighborhoods that have uh, a greater uh, proportion of rat sightings. And uh, w one of the um, images on this slide shows you uh, different New York City neighborhoods that have a greater um, percentage of, of rat sightings uh, r relative to others. And so this is a in very interesting way to utilize secondary data. Data that was collected for a different purpose, um, but that can be used to answer your own research question. When we talk about doing data analysis, um, data analysis refers to the process of inspecting, cleaning, transforming, and modeling data to answer questions and generate new information. Um, so a lot of times when you uh, first import a data set into um, a statistical program, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute, um, a lot of times you have to clean and create new variables, uh, transform uh, the format of, of the way that the data is stored in the data set um, before you can actually use statistical techniques to analyze it. Um, however, um, this is a very broad definition and I want to note that data analysis can be um, both quantitative or it can be qualitative. So quantitative data analysis refers to um, data analysis of, of numerical data. Uh, and so in a, in a data analysis of numerical data might be um, describing the, the frequency of internet use, um, the number of hours per day that, somebody, um, that people in your study use the internet. And so that might be a very simple quantitative data analysis. Uh, versus qualitative data analysis can be um, the analysis of, of textual uh, or, or data that you've collected from interviews and participant observations. And so uh, data analysis can be both quantitative or, or qualitative. Over the next few weeks, we're, we're mostly going to be talking about quantitative data analysis. We'll also touch upon uh, qualitative uh, research, but um, in this class, we're going to sort of be focusing a lot on quantitative data analysis, that is the analysis of numerical data. So wh where are some different places where you can find data? Um, and particularly secondary data, da data that other people have collected. So these can be interesting sources uh, of data for your own research. Um, the 311 calls that I presented to you were, were found, I found those on, on New York City Open Data. New York City Open Data makes available a lot of different data sets that compile information collected by the city for different purposes. And you can actually use uh, these data for, for your own research, um, perhaps. Um, ICPSR, the Inter Consortium for Political and Social Research, maintains a, a data bank of data that was collected by different social science researchers um, that they've sort of made available to, to uh, students and, and public. And so your university usually has to be a member of ICPSR, which I believe CUNY is. So you can actually download data sets that were collected by other researchers and perhaps use them for your own project. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention also make available uh, data um, that you can utilize for your own research. Uh, two, two very popular data sources collected by the CDC include the National Health Interview Survey and also the um, NHANES, the National um, Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. These are uh, ve two very large-scale, um, very broad general um, health surveys that collect a lot of different behavioral information about, about people in the United States, their health behaviors, their attitudes, towards healthcare um, and their demographic information. And, and these data sets can be used to sort of describe the relationship between dem different demographic characteristics and health status, uh, the, the proportion of, of US adults and children that engage in different health behaviors. It can be very useful for descriptive and explanatory research. The Medicare.gov uh, website provides a lot of information about the quality of healthcare services that 
adults who receive um, health services through their Medicare and Medicaid benefits. You have different um, inform data sources about the quality of care in different hospitals and states across the U.S. And finally, uh, another interesting source of, of data is the Dartmouth, the Dartmouth Atlas of Healthcare uh, presents a lot of information about geographical variations in, in um, spending on, on healthcare services. And there's been a lot of discussion about this topic over the past few years as researchers have documented a significant variation in healthcare spending across different geographical areas in, in the United States. Um, so in this, in this, uh, in this image, you can see that there's, there's a greater uh, amount of Medicare um, spending and reimbursement in, in the South compared to uh, the, the West and the, the, and particularly the Midwest. Alongside quantitative data analysis are, um, is the discipline of statistics. And statistics is a, a scientific discipline that's focused on the analysis, interpretation, and presentation of numerical data. And statistics are really the, the tools that you use to do quantitative data analysis. And that's what we're going to be talking about um, in In our upcoming, uh, in our upcoming lectures, there are there are four uh, primary tools that you can use for uh, statistical analysis, and these are four popular tools that are they're used to do st uh, statistical analysis with co um, uh, data sets that you've imported into uh, into your computer. Um, and so, four popular tools for doing statistical analysis include Stata, SPSS, SAS, and R. Um, w one of the pieces of the software that, that are used by a lot of students when they first begin doing statistical analysis are, are SPSS. SPSS has a, a graphical user interface and doesn't um, necessarily, um, at a very beginning level, require a lot of coding. So it's, it has a, um, perhaps like an easier learning curve when you're uh, first starting to do statistical analysis with a computer. Um, I'm a big um, proponent of R. I, I find it a very powerful software program. And R also has the benefit of being free. Uh, for anybody to download it's it's open source program and it's it's freely available to to download and, and use and there are a lot of resources online for using R to do statistical analysis